everyone, this is Mary, you're in Mary Reads, and today's video is going to be very light and entertaining. So I saw one of the book bloggers, I don't remember who exactly, uh, did this video where he chose the books he would take with him if his house was on fire. So I decided to do a similar thing and find the books that I would take if my house was on fire. So let's say the fire is just starting, so I have time to um, kind of grab a bunch of books and run away. Obviously, I would like to take my whole library, uh, which is not that big, which makes the whole thing easier. But I chose like eight or nine books, I don't remember how many exactly are here, that are the most valuable, the most important to me. Uh, these are the books that I really want to read I haven't read before, or these are the books that I love, I read them already and I love them. Uh, these are the books that I get a lot of suggestions for, so that means that most likely I will like them. And I decided not to take my Kindle, obviously, because that would be a huge, huge uh, cheating thing, and I don't think that's going to be interesting. So let's start with the books. And the first book is Tess of the D'Urbervilles. I have to say, uh, Victorian novels are, well, it's not fair. I love Victorian novels, so they absolutely have their place in this uh, category, in this video. I would obviously grab Victorian novels. So yeah, this is kind of, uh, being a Victorian novel is cheating. This is the story about a girl who is going to try to get away from rural poverty she grew up in and become rich. And she kind of uh, goes away to find her happiness, um, her, her love. And this is kind of a very, uh, well, very common uh, thing for a Victorian novel, very common idea. Uh, this girl deciding to leave to escape poverty to become somebody in life. Uh, this is similar to Lady Audley that I recently talked about uh, in my marathon. If you haven't watched it, uh, watch it. It's pretty cool. And this is what the next book is going to be because it's The Custom of the Country by Edith Wharton. And this is a similar book to the previous one. We have our main character who... Uh, goes to New York to find a uh, better place in life to become rich and I I love this trope I don't know what's with me when it comes to like this idea of becoming rich changing your life coming to like a big city uh, discovering all the hardships and uh, trying to get through all the obstacles I don't know what's with me and that um, idea, that scenario, but I just love it. And I haven't read this book yet, um, so I'm hoping to get to it very, very soon, and I'm very excited about it. And the third book, again, very, very similar to the previous two uh, books that I showed. Um, I have to say, though, first, that this book is going to be in my native language, so you might not be able to read the cover. Um, but yeah, I got this book a while ago. I brought it with me to the US. So this book is Sister Carrie by Theodore Dreiser. I talked about this book so, so, so many times. I love it. It's one of my favorite ever. Um, I was so moved by the plot. And again, it's very similar a very similar idea. Carrie comes to Chicago to uh, start working with her sister and she wants something bigger in life. She wants to be somebody. She wants money. She wants to live well. And when she realizes that there is no way she can do it in Chicago, she eventually moves to New York. And this is where um, her like boom of her life happens. I loved the book so much, and there is no way I'm getting out of the fire without it. And now I am pretty sure we're done with the Victorian novels, so now we have a different, um, like, different kind of books. And this one is also my recent find that I already showed in my three books in three days marathon. It's the book No Longer Human. I loved it. It was a very, very weird book in the sense of like, 
we don't get much action. We get a lot of reflections of the character. Um, the character is rethinking his life. We read his notebooks, his diaries, and we try to understand what went wrong in life, what happened to him, why he was the way he was. And I was so surprised that in only 176 pages, the author was able to describe the life of our main character so well that we are able to get the idea, we're able to understand, we're able to relate in some cases. And this book was just eye-opening, I could say. I understood so many things about so many different people who I never understood before. And this is the book I recommended to my husband. So even if I'm not reading it again for some time, he will read it. And the next book that I already talked about, and I mentioned it so many times, it's Little Life by Hanyi Nagihara. And I'm probably not going to be showing the book because I lost the dust cover, which I don't feel bad about. I hate dust covers. They just keep moving all around and you can't grab the book. So yeah, I'm not going to be showing it because there's really nothing to see. Um, but Little Life is this amazing story of four young men who live in New York and who are trying to build their careers in the city. When I got into the book, when I just started reading the book, I thought that it's going to be something similar to Sex and the City. I thought that it's going to be uh, the same thing, but about men. It was not. It was so not. So if this is the idea you got, then this is not um, what you're going to get from the book. I mean, it's similar in the sense that we have four people who are friends, who stay friends for a very long time, who bring their friendship, who carry their friendship through the years and who achieve something and become somebody in uh, like their careers, but nothing else, nothing else is similar. So I've heard that some people hate the book. I've heard that some people love the book. So you, you get very bipolar, I guess you could say, emotions about the book. So uh, if you read the book, please let me know what your opinion on it was, because I was in love with the book and I'm telling everybody to read it. But then I also hear that people hated it and I don't understand why. And I'm thinking maybe I shouldn't have recommended it to anybody. Maybe I was wrong. So I, I want to know um, about what, what other people think about the book. I have to say though, if you're deciding if you want to read the book, you have to make sure that you're prepared for a lot of like heaviness, a lot of bad emotions. You get um, a lot of uh, psychological and physical abuse and it's sometimes hard to read. So if you're ready for that, then absolutely get into the book. But if that's something that triggers you very much, then it can be very hard to read. And the next book is The Secret History by Donna Tartt. And I can't say I loved this book so much that I want to take it with me anywhere and I want to save it from the fire. Um, one reason for why I want to save this book is, well, I love the edition and it was a gift and it's very important for me. But the other reason is that at some point I want to reread the book and understand the details better because I feel like this is one of the books that the more you read it, the more you understand, the more details you see, the uh, bigger the picture gets. So yeah, this I'm, I'm taking this book hoping that it's going to grow in my um, eyes in the future. So not again, not that this book was bad. I just feel like I could have gotten more from it and I'm hoping to get more from it. So I would like to save this one as well. And the next book that is kind of similar to the previous one in the sense of like my feelings towards it is Master and Margarita. Uh, I made a horrible, horrible mistake in one of my previous videos saying that Nabokov wrote it. That's because I was thinking about adding some of Nabokov's uh, books into the video and I kind of 
completely uh, lost it. So of course it was written by uh, Bulgakov and I really, really like the book. I like it so much. I read it three times, but I have to say I need to read it probably three or four more times because there is so much to understand. There is so much, um, so many different ideas that you need to know how to interpret, that you need to understand. You get talks about totalitarian uh, regimes, you get a uh, talk about religion, you get a um, talk about evil and kind, and this book just covers so many eternal topics that you need to have a very, very big background to understand everything here. And I do not have that background, unfortunately, so I would love to keep this book in my library for as long as possible and read it as many times as possible to understand it as well as possible. Um, I was surprised that not many people talk about this book. It's a Russian book, Russian literature. And whenever people talk about Russian literature, I keep hearing, obviously, Tolstoy, Dostoevsky. I, I hear Chekhov, and I have n almost never, like once I've heard about Bulgakov. And I'm surprised, I don't know why. And I want more people to know about this book, and I want more people to read this book, because it's honestly a masterpiece. It really is. And the last book, the author that uh, got me into depression and just very dark moods, uh, Dostoevsky, Crime and Punishment. Again, I also mentioned this book uh, a lot of times, and I just feel like if, if I have to save the most valuable books in my library, it has to be something eternal. It has to be um, classics as... as I would like to save as many classical books as I can, and this would definitely be one of the books, because it's not just a novel, it's also a big philosophical work that you have to understand that I did not understand when I first read it, and that I would absolutely love to read now and see how it would feel now, how I would understand it now. And interestingly enough, I keep hearing this theory that you can either love Tolstoy or Dostoevsky. Obviously, you can enjoy both, but true love happens with only one of them. And I feel like if that theory is true, for me, it's absolutely Tolstoy. But I would really, really like Dostoevsky to become one too. So I want to... Um, keep the book. I want to read it and reread it, and I want to understand it better, and I want to make Dostoevsky as big of a part um, of my literary uh, life as Tolstoy is. And these were all the books that I wanted to save. I hope you enjoyed the video, and please let me know uh, what books would you save if you could. And if any of the books that I decided to save resonate with you, if you think that these are actually good books to save. Um, if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, please do that. That helps a lot and means a lot for me. And I hope to see you soon. Bye-bye.